What's going on? This is Kerry Wood, Mr. Sports and Swag, sportsandswag.com, and the Sports and Swag podcast. I want to welcome you into another edition. Again, we're going to talk about these NBA playoffs. Three games have gone down into the record book since we talked to you last on Sunday night. I'm going to try to catch you up to speed and give you my take on what's going on these, here in the last three nights. Uh, really only one good game to be honest that was last night the overtime thriller between the Houston Rockets and the San Antonio Spurs Spurs winning that game 110-107 to take a three games to two lead over the Rockets as they go back to Houston for game six Uh, on Monday night the Golden State Warriors took care of the Utah Jazz sweeping them in four games and then, of course, tonight, the Boston Celtics took out the Washington Wizards in impressive fashion, 123-101. Celtics taking three games to two lead in that series as well. Game six will be in Washington, man. And that we're going to start off with that game, talk about what happened tonight. Uh, the Boston Celtics came out and just punched those guys in the mouth. They punched John Wall and company in the mouth. And the Wizards pretty much kind of balled up and just kind of took it, man. They balled up in the corner and just, I don't know, they didn't fight back at all. Did not fight back at all. And, uh, you know, I wish I could say that it was surprising, but it's really not really not. I mean, this is kind of the MO of some of these teams that are coming in these playoffs. The teams that really don't have a you know, pedigree or whatever, or don't have uh, a lot of experience in these playoffs. They kind of they'll throw a few punches, especially at home. But when they get on the road, man, uh, <laughs> The fight kind of seems to leave them every time. I don't. I don't. Understand. I really don't understand it. Especially a team as talented as, as this Wizards team is. It, you know, you just have to really wonder. You know, this team. I think it's no question. If we see how, you know, we see guys like John Wall and Bradley Beal and all of those guys. So many ways to score. Obviously, they're the better team, at least offensively anyway, but they're not getting it done. They're not getting it done primarily on the defensive end. And uh, again, like we talked about in prior podcasts, we talked about it last Friday night. I mean, it, it's this a mental toughness to go on the road and get to get a win like that, even to hang around. I mean, Washington didn't even hang around past the National Anthem. Not even past the national anthem, and that game was over. And uh, I don't know, it's, it's, it's crazy how that works out after blowing Boston completely out of D.C. the last two nights. I don't know. Could we see the same thing happen again Friday night? I think it's possible. I, I would not be surprised at all to see Washington blow the Celtics off the court again. That's the kind of series we have, man. I mean, you know, the other night, it was, I think it was 15 out of the 16 games played here in the conference semifinals. 15 of those 16 games were decided by double digits. I think that has inched its way up to 16 out of 18. We finally got one more game last night <laughs> with the Rockets and the Spurs. So, uh... Teams not getting it done on the road. It's nothing really new in the NBA, but man, it's it. I, I don't know. I mean, if you looked at the TNT uh, inside the NBA after the game tonight, and Charles Barkley was commenting about this being the worst playoffs ever, it's hard to argue with him. It is hard to argue with him with all the blowouts. All the blowouts. You see two sweeps, the Cavaliers. And the uh, Golden State Warriors sweeping their series without 
really without any resistance. Man, I mean, this, this is not playoff basketball. It just, it just is not. But anyway, let's get back to this game tonight. Uh, you know, it's obvious the, the Wizards didn't show up to win this ball game. It's obvious. And you just have to wonder why. I mean, uh, it's one thing to come in, you, you know, you don't shoot well or whatever, but to come in and just not compete. You know, it's, it's a huge red flag. It's a huge red flag. Boston was obviously the more desperate team, no doubt. They were far more desperate because if, if, if Boston loses this, this game, it goes down 3-2 going back to Washington. I mean, you know, this series is more than likely over in six games. So, they, they, of course, the urgency was more on their side, and that's understandable. But if you're Washington, you don't want to come back to Boston for game seven, right? I mean, you, you're riding the momentum wave. And, I, you know, look, I know that we talk about, we hear the, the pros, you hear Shaq and them talking about, oh, the momentum doesn't travel from game to game. And I agree with that. But, I mean, after the strong performances in, in D.C., man, at home on your home floor, for you to come out and just, I, you know, I don't know, man. This is supposed to be the playoffs, but <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But again, give credit to Boston. Give them credit. I mean, the Wizards tried to do everything that they did in, in games three and four to take Isaiah Thomas out of the game and in, in, in some ways it worked but the difference was Isaiah was finding guys open and they were knocking shots down Avery Bradley unbelievable first half he had 25 points at the half 25 at the half and ended up with 29 I mean he didn't really have to do a whole lot in the second half of that game <laughs> game was pretty much over at the half. Uh, a lot of guys stepping up. Horford stepped up and had a really good game. Uh, uh, Jay Crowder had a nice game. Even Terry Rozier off the bench. His stats may not show it necessarily, but what he did, the defensive job he did on John Wall to spell Avery Bradley was impressive. Um, uh, you know, again, you know, it, it would be nice if Terry Rozier could play like that again in Game Six if you're a Boston Celtic fan. But again, those the role players, the the players that come off the bench, usually don't have those type games when it comes down to playing on the road. So we'll see what happens. But I mean, a very impressive performance in in, in that fact. Um, John Wall still had a good statistical game. But uh, not what he we've been used to seeing from him, especially in the first two games in Boston. Uh, Bradley Beal, 16 points. I mean, it's okay. You know, Bradley Beal, I mean, this is a guy that doesn't has really not performed well himself shooting the basketball on the on the road. Uh, you know, I just really don't understand what what the deal is with that. And Bradley Beal, if he must be put up in that um, higher echelon of guards, man. Some of the better shooters in the NBA. He's, he's got to perform on the road as well. You can't just do your dirty work <laughs> at home and, and have everything be all clean on the road. You got to, you got to do it. On, you got to do it both ways. Uh, you know, again. Decent performances other than those guys. Kelly Oubre with 13 points coming off his suspension. Uh, not what they've been, not what they've been used to getting from the, the guys. Uh, Otto Porter, uh, Morris, you know those guys playing the small forward position or whatever. Uh, not not the, not the stats that they, we've been seeing from them in the games that Washington just really dominated the Celtics in. So. Yeah, and it, it comes as no surprise that the Celtics won this basketball game. No surprise at all, and we'll see what they can do um, coming up Friday night. Should be very interesting. For the stat, the stat of this game, 
the one that sticks out to me is 33 assists by the Boston Celtics. 33. And that that is an impressive number, and that you saw the ball moving. Um, but it was it started with their defense when they were when they're able to get stops when they can get stops. They can get a few turnovers here and there. They can get that break going. Celtics are a, a tough team to beat, but that is that is the key to it. They are, they are a defensive team first, and that defense kind of sets up everything else. So we saw it happen for them tonight. They take that three games to two lead back to D.C., and uh, we're going to get ready for game six. We're going to get ready for game six, and... Uh, I don't know. I, I I think we're probably gonna see Game Seven, and that's kind of how I figured the series was gonna go. I had Boston winning this thing in seven games, and I don't know it looks like it's gonna put it to the test. Anyway, let's move on. Let's talk about the Tuesday night, the Houston Rockets. Yeah, man, my Houston Rockets. If you don't know, I'm a huge Rockets fan. So I'll try to keep my biases in. <laughs> I'll try to keep them out of this. <laughs> Not that easy, man. I mean, that was a rough, rough few minutes of basketball to watch there. That, that was tough to watch. i say about the two, two and a half minute mark on through the end of regulation and down through overtime was tough to watch. I, you know, it... it Again, it gets back to that that mentality, man. It gets back to that mentality. The San Antonio Spurs. And this is the thing about it. The Spurs are usually that team. The Spurs are usually that team that makes all the plays at the end of the game, that don't make the mistakes, that uh, make you pay for your mistakes. All of that was the opposite last night. All of it was, except maybe, you know, a couple plays where they did finally make Houston pay for their mistakes. I mean, how many times did LaMarcus Aldridge miss point-blank layups? Against a lot of those times against James Harden, who's, what, 6'5"? Who's giving up about 5, 6 inches or more to uh, LaMarcus Aldridge? I mean... Point blank misses at the rim. If it wasn't James Harden, it was sometimes it would be Trevor Ariza. If it wasn't Trevor Ariza, it was Ryan Anderson. The rest of the times, yeah, it probably was Clint Capella where he doesn't have necessarily a height advantage, but he does have an experience advantage. He does have a strength advantage on Clint Capella. And he wasn't able to finish. He just was not able to finish around the hoop. There's clearly something going on with him. There's no question about it that his left knee or his uh, ankle or whatever it is 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 clearly bothering Lamarcus Aldridge. But they he had countless chances to put that game away himself. And then again, there were some chances, some instances there where he did not take um, he didn't take the. Uh, the aggressive role. He wasn't very aggressive and, you know, he kind of deferred to Kawhi Leonard or, or or Danny Green or whoever, whomever he could find to pass the ball to. <laughs> very just dis- really disappointing to see LaMarcus Aldridge play that way. But again, there's, there's clearly something going on with this guy health wise. You know, I don't know. Hopefully he can get that straight here and in time for game six or whatever. And maybe he can feel a little bit better on that. Um, Pau Gasol, the same thing. I mean, I don't know of any injuries going on with Pau Gasol, but, I mean, Spurs still did not take advantage of their advantage on the inside. Still didn't do it. And then that's not to even mention Kawhi Leonard going out with the injury, the injury to his ankle. Uh, that could possibly cost him game six. We don't know. Not sure if he's going to play yet. Uh, indication is showing that from today's 
practicing or whatever that went on, it seems like he was okay. But, you know, that's that's not game speed action. Is he going to be okay? I don't know. You know, I don't know. There's one thing about it. I mean, the Spurs need this guy to win it. They need him to win this series. Then again, maybe they don't. <laughs> maybe they don't need him. As many chances as the <laughs> Spurs, you know, put that game on a silver platter for Houston to take advantage and just just end that game and, and, and come back to Houston with a chance to win it tomorrow night in six. I mean, uh, who, who can tell? Who knows if Houston's going to be able to take advantage if Kawhi Leonard is unable to play? I mean, they put that game on a silver platter. Not only did LaMarcus Aldridge miss, miss shots, not only was Ka- Kawhi Leonard injured, but countless shots didn't go down from the outside, missed free throws, turnovers in, at the, uh, you know, in crunch time, there within the last few minutes of the game. Just everything that you would not <laughs> you would not believe a, a San Antonio Greg Popovich coach team would be doing to end the game, especially here in the playoffs. They they handed that game to the Rockets. They absolutely handed it to them. I mean it was it was like Santa Claus on Christmas morning coming down the chimney and putting the gift under the tree and then the Rockets woke up Christmas morning and just threw it outside the door man (laughs) we don't want it we don't want this game that's what it looked like that's what it looked like I mean the Rockets had everything going their way as far as the pace of the game Uh, they had you know, they, they were sharing the basketball. You, you saw multiple guys in on the action. Ryan Anderson had a good game shooting it. Uh, Patrick Beverly had some good shots. He had some big shots that kept Houston uh, in the lead or kept them close early in that game. Uh, Clint Capella had a nice game. Uh, Lou Williams only had six points, but, you know, they had enough scoring. They had enough going on where they should have been able to finish that game, no problem. But then the final two minutes come. And after, you know, 21 assists now, they had 21 assists in this game, which is not bad. It's not great, but it's not bad for the Rockets. Uh, Ten of those assists went to James Harden. But in the last couple of minutes of that game, it, it all of it came crashing down. I think the one thing that I think most Houston Rockets fans, including myself, feared when it was announced that James Harden would be the full-time point guard was that he would revert back to some of the, you know, the plays where he would just hold the ball to the, you know, to weigh down the shot clock and then have to throw up desperate shots at the end, especially at the end of games. We hadn't seen that from him much. I mean, if you watched the Houston Rockets this year like I have, you you didn't see much of that. Yeah, there were some instances where he did hold the ball too long and it, it bogged down the, the offense. The offense got stagnant. But for the most part, James Harden stayed away from that most of the season. For whatever reason, he decided to go to revert back to the old James Harden. And it's it's a it's I mean it's a mystery to figure out why. Well, then again, maybe it's not because that's kind of just the way the NBA goes. I mean, you put the ball into the hands of your star player and you let him work in the last two minutes. You know, we've seen the Kobe Bryant's do that. We've seen the Michael Jordans and the Car- Carmelo Anthony's and all those guys do it. The difference between a Jordan or a Kobe Bryant and a Carmelo Anthony and a James Harden if those guys won championships these guys haven't won anything 
Haven't come close to winning a championship. <laughs> Haven't come close. You know, hard not to trust his teammates there at the end of that ball game. Or for the ball to, you know, Houston to run this offense where Harden wouldn't get the ball until there was maybe about 10 seconds left on the shot clock and then they want him to, mass, you know, just magically make something happen. That's not how they got the lead. That's not how they played from the lead most of that ball game last night. That's not how they did it. They didn't do it with the ball and the staying in Harden's hands. They did it by moving the basketball. They did it with Gordon making plays off the dribble. They made it they did it with Patrick Beverly making plays off the dribble. They made it with the high screen and roll with Capello or, or the screen and roll with Ryan Anderson or whoever. That isolation basketball didn't get them that lead. And uh, that isolation basketball cost them. It cost them in the end against a team that, I mean, that's not going to, they're going to take advantage of that. Even though San Antonio wasn't very impressive either, they ultimately did enough to take advantage. Now, a lot of the chatter is going to go back on Mike D'Antoni or has gone back on Mike D'Antoni for playing only seven seven players in that game, a seven-man rotation <laughs> in an NBA playoff game. It's kind of unheard of. I mean, I've heard of some eight-man rotations, I'm, you know, back, back in the day. And some people kind of act like they haven't. But, I don't know, some, kind, some people kind of act like they haven't heard of those eight-man rotations, but I have. But, man, seven-man rotation. Especially when you have a guy, you know, some guys over there on your bench that actually had some nice playing time during the season. I mean, Sam Decker was a, man, he's, he's not a guy that was a garbage time guy. I mean, this is a guy that plays significant minutes and produced. So I don't know why Dan Tony's decided not to play him at all. I, I have no clue. But to say the seven-man rotation was the reason that Houston lost this game, well, I don't know. I mean, it's debatable. I mean, of course, the way the Rockets ended off the game is like, it's can easily be said that it was fatigue, but again, I mean, San Antonio, I mean, <laughs> don't think they weren't fatigued? I, I'm going to kind of say they were, plus they were playing without their best player. I mean, I mean, playing a seventh man, to me, didn't have as much to do with what happened at the end of that game as changing the philosophy on how you play offense did. Keeping the ball in in James Harden's hands for 20 seconds was not the offense that this team used. The team that's supposed to have been holding for 20, 20 seconds in the shot clock was supposed to have been the San Antonio Spurs. Rockets played completely into the Spurs' hands there in the, at the end of that game and in overtime. And they blew a golden opportunity to take the lead and possibly have a chance to uh, finish this series on um, Thursday night. It's a terrible ending by the Rockets. You know, I put a poll out on, Go- on Google+. Plus. Uh, pretty much gave four choices. Would you blame it on Harden for the loss? Would you blame it on Mike D'Antoni for playing the seven-man rotation? Was it a mix of them both? Or, (laughs) I kind of threw the last one in there. Would you blame it on Ginobili? We'll get back. Well, surely a a few San Antonio fans must have kind of chimed in because there was over 35% of the, of the vote went to Manu Ginobili. Now, we'll talk about Ginobili for, for a quick second. I mean, what a ball game this guy had. I mean, he, this is a guy that's going to be 40 years old here on oh, just a few weeks. 
and he had a dunk. <laughs> he had 12 points, which is not great, but that's pretty good for him seeing as he averaged only three points coming into this series here in the playoffs. But the block shot there at the end, I mean, but you know what? It wasn't the block shot there at the end, you know, was huge. It was, and of course, it, it won the game. But, but who knows? Who, it's hard may not make that shot anyway. But it was the, the contribution that he gave, especially after Kawhi Leonard went to the bench. I mean, the Spurs needed someone to kind of handle the ball a little bit. You know, Patty Mills looked fatigued himself. Ginobili came in and, and just did what he does. I mean, it, it it is amazing the player that this guy is. I don't think he gets the credit. His career, he doesn't get the credit he deserves, man. Because he's always going to be overshadowed by Tim Duncan. He's always going to be overshadowed by Tony Parker. But this guy, the professionalism that he shows, and I don't know, that, that mental toughness. Again, there goes that... That phrase, those two words I've been kind of preaching here the last few nights. That's that's the guy that comes off the bench and and won that game for the Spurs last night. The Rockets don't have a guy like that to come off the bench. They don't. So, unbelievable game for Manu Ginobili. But back to that poll again, like I said, 35%. <laughs> I'm sure, like I said, a lot of those were Spurs fans voted that Manu was the reason for the Spurs winning that game. But the overwhelming vote was 48%. 48% said it was James. It was, you know, they would blame it on the beard. And I, I tend to agree. I tend to agree. While I, I definitely think that Mike D'Antoni should have played more than seven. It was the last few minutes of that game that, that cost Houston the chance to be up 3-2. And really, if you would really think about it, they probably should have won game three as well. This series could easily be over. It could easily be over. But that's why the San Antonio Spurs are the San Antonio Spurs. <laughs> the absolute best franchise in the NBA. And they're, they're, they're that for a reason, and they've shown it here in this series. So, again, we'll see what happens game uh, number six in Houston. The Rockets have to win it to force a game seven. Uh, quickly, let's talk about the Golden State Warriors doing what they did to the Utah Jazz. You know, I, I really thought the Jazz would get a game or two in that series. At least, well, maybe not two, but I thought they'd get a game. It didn't work out that way. They didn't come close. <laughs> the Warriors are locked in, and um, it doesn't matter if it's Steve Kerr, whether it's Mike Brown, whether it's Luke Walden, or it could be <laughs> Luke Skywalker. <laughs> it doesn't matter who's coaching that team on that sideline. Man. This, this team is locked in. And they are going to sail into the to, to the NBA Finals. I mean, from what we've seen from the Spurs and the Rockets the last few nights, I mean, does it, do you have any confidence, barring an injury, that either of these two teams can win more than the game? I don't. I really don't. I, I, I you know. The Spurs, I don't know if they have the legs. I don't know if they have the, the athleticism. The Rockets, I don't think they have the experience. I don't think they have the, the mental toughness. Same thing for the Click Cavaliers on the other end. I mean, I, I feel a little bit better about maybe one of those teams could win a game or two. I wouldn't bet money on it, but, you know, I, I feel like Boston could come up with a huge defensive effort if they um, make it to the Eastern Finals. You know, maybe win a game or two. Maybe John Wall gets hot for the Wizards and they win a game or two in that series. Other than that, man, I 
like I said, the, the size, the size of major injury, it's a wrap. It is a wrap. Just get ready when the Golden State Warriors, the Cleveland Cavaliers, three. <laughs> Might as well get ready. That's all I can say. I, I, I wish it was something different. Or at least had a chance of being something different. But that's what you get, man. You know, we, we have players stacked on top of players like you have in, in Oakland and Cleveland. That's what you get. So anyway, again, these playoffs, man. <laughs> I love the NBA playoffs, but it's, it these have been some of the harder ones to watch, to be quite honest with you. But again, I'm going to be here watching it. And I'm going to be right back here talking about them here on Sports and Swag Podcast. Again, I want to thank you for joining in and listening. I want you to please continue to do so as we'll bring content to you more and more. And then we're going to, of course, spread it out more than NBA playoffs. We're going to talk about it all. We're going to talk about some NFL, college football, MLB, Major League Baseball, you know, what's going on with the Cubs being only 17 and 17 right now? 500 teams. I don't know, man. Look like they're drinking the same water the Cleveland Cavaliers drunk all year. <laughs> that championship hangover has hit the Windy City. <laughs> championship hangover. Uh, we're going to get into all of that. We're going to get into all of that. Just make sure you're right here to listen. Again, it's Kerry Wood, Mr. Sports and Swag. Follow me on Google Plus. Follow me on Twitter, Sports and Swag, and then I have the second account. That's Mr. S- at Mr. Uh, sports and Swag. That is M R underscore Sports and Swag. And then, of course, please like the Facebook page, and of course, of course, continue to visit the website. Again. Thank you for coming in to listen. Until next time, I'll holler.